So in the last video I made the sunflower, uh, which is uh, sunflower and bees felting. It was made using wet felting. This isn't the actual sunflower that I made. And I had to actually embroider that one because I was doing nothing while I was standing manning a gallery and in the quiet periods I would embroider. So I ended up with something like this. And the idea is you embroider some detail onto the sunflower. It's all pretty abstract and pretty simple. And then you apply the bees. And the bees are simply these little lozenges that have got stripes on them. So they're felt lozenges made partially through wet felting and then dry felting. Um, then I add the black and then the idea is that they get put onto the sunflowers. I might have one flying in over here and another one on the sunflower. I don't know, I'll see. But I'm going to show you how to make these from the lozenges. And also I'll show you the simplicity of the embroidery. Nothing too complex, no specific stitches. There is um, a few stitches here that are chain stitch but most of it is really simple. You also you embroider the sunflower before you apply the bees. I just thought I'd show you why I embroider. Um, I, got a, I get a bit carried away with it because I do actually really like the detail on it. So this is a blossom tree and I will do a tutorial on this. Like I find that just a little bit too undefined for my liking but I love it once you start getting the beautiful bits and pieces in, the lovely embroidery. So that's one that's just about finished and I will apply some bees onto this as well. Uh, maybe some smaller ones, these are more for the sunflower. So you can see that everything becomes quite defined in these lovely sort of abstract marks that the embroidery makes and I do this in front of the telly. I do this for something to do which is doesn't make too much of a mess and just keeps my hands busy. So for the dry felting you're going to be turning this lozenger into this little B shape. You need your lozenges, you need some foam I just have a foam piece that I had left over and you need wools. This is some tapestry wool, some brown and I just use a bit of black wool to make up the heads and the, str and the tail. So it's just merino tops and then you'll need your needle, your felting needle. These are specific little needles. They are triangular in shape. They're not all this shape, but for general purposes and for what we're using, that's, the, that's fine. They have little barbs on them. They are supplied in sizes between 42 and 32, 42 being the thickest. For general purposes, about 32, 38, 36 is fine. You pop them into these things, so they sit within this groove and the Bend, the bent end goes in over the top and then it gets pushed into the actual handle and then that's fixed. So it means that if this breaks you can change it. I would recommend buying a few spares because I go through these but I am rough. Um, what else do I need to say? So when you felt like this the needle gets the lovely little filaments of the merino wool of the wool and amalgamates it. So over time this becomes quite firm. I don't want it too firm. I want it fairly soft and I want it soft on the head because when it's actually embroidered down I want it to be fairly flat.
For this next bit you'll need your two lozenges that you made partially wet felted and partially dry felted. So you need your foam cushion and your felted needle to push these fibres in together with a felting needle. You need some black wool. I have made the top of this lozenge softer than the bottom because this is going to be my head. I'm going to wrap some black around it and when I embroider it down onto the sunflower it'll all get sort of compressed into shape. Um, I don't really want to make the shape too much at this point because when I want it sewn I want it to go a little bit flatter so it's not too hard, it's quite soft. And now you just make the heads and the tails and the stripes. So you can use black wool, I've got brown wool here and I'm just going to start doing the head. Oops, there's muck in there. And you don't need much. You just want to make sure it's black. So you just bring the wool around to make the head. You can cut off any excess and just fill the end in in black. This is going to be fairly rounded, so I'm just going to fold his head over. So you end up with a little round head like so. I'm just going to get that down. Right, there you go. It's really pretty simple. So you some of the hairs have come through on the yellow. You see, you can either use, sort of really simply, just bring stripes round with wool and just simply dry felt them in. And that's really easy. Um, so I'm going to put one, two stripes and a tail end. So I just want a little bit on the tail end as well. So get a sort of shape that is more you, easy to use. Oh, and I'm also thinking that that's going to be the top. So the underside can be a little le um, less neat, a little bit more messy. And I just want a few bits on its tail just to make it a black tail. And again, I don't want too much. It gets too bulky otherwise. So get rid of all the excess. But keep it nice and pointed for his sting end. So all I want is a little point at the end. But all this will sort of work when you embroider it. So that's the underside of it. I do, it doesn't matter about the bit of colour I haven't got in it. I'm just going to bring another stripe round. I don't probably didn't need two. Probably only need three, I mean, I probably only need two wrap rounds. There's the underside. So there's the underside. Wrap it round once, twice, fix it down, because it's easier to do at this point, and then cut the end off. And just cut the end off. You've got two little stripes on your bees, and just finish off the dry felting. You've got a lovely little bee. The rest is going to be done with the embroidery.